Hi, my name's Ed Young. This is my lovely wife, Lisa. We've been married for almost 40 years. I grew up in the Carolinas, had the opportunity to grow up in a pastor's home, believe it or not. But due to athletics, I sort of lived in, in one zone, which was the Christian family zone, the church zone. And because of athletics, I was thrust into a very non-Christian environment, I guess you could say. Had the opportunity to play a lot of basketball, played some in college at Florida State University. My wife and I met when I was 14, she was 15. We met in church, dated all the way through, got married at the ripe old age of 21. Then, well, about five or six years later, after seminary and finishing my undergrad, we came up to Dallas-Fort Worth to start Fellowship Church. We have multiple locations. And we've written about 15 books and had the opportunity to lecture and talk about marriage, I guess, around the world. So I think that's probably that's, my uh, favorite topic. Yeah. Uh, marriage. Well, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I love, love it too. I love being married to you. Well, I love and being married to you. Good. Um, I'm Lisa, and I grew up also in the Carolinas. And um, as Ed said, we dated all throughout. And when we went into ministry after getting married and, and came up to Dallas to start mm -hmm. Fellowship Church, we had no idea what was in store. I mean, I guess, you know, we're very new in the church planting world, and we planted Fellowship Church with about 30 families, and we've just enjoyed watching God build His church mm -hmm. um, because everything can be attributed, you know, to what He's done. So I, I love being able to share ministry with you, life with you. We have four children. Um, our oldest daughter, Lee Beth, uh, went to be with the Lord in January of last year, and she is um, now healed and whole in heaven. Um, we have three uh, other si children, um, her siblings, if you will, and they are married and in ministry with us at Fellowship Church. We have five grandchildren. That's the best thing to talk about. You know, raising children or bringing children up is awesome, but having grandchildren is just, as Ed always says, on a, a whole, whole nother level. level. A For whole sure. Level. We have a lot of fun. We have Sterling, Jackson, Bear. I yes. like these names. His name's Bear. His names are incredible. And then, of course, our daughter, who's an artist and her husband is a musician, their children are Thunder and Dodge. Yep. So that's like the all name team. So Lisa, I want to ask you some questions because I definitely want to get to know you better. Of well, course, I, I think you know but me more pretty importantly, well. I want to get to know those of us um, who are were, who were watching, who are connecting with us um, about I hope them to know yeah. about us and, yeah. and so we can know about them. The first one is, and I don't even know this answer, I don't think. What is your favorite meal? I mean, like, what is like, okay, this is the ultimate meal. Mm, you know what, Ed? You and I are foodies. We love mm -hmm. food. We love restaurants. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I would say, you and I have talked about this, okay. either Italian. For you. Well, for me, it's Asian. I love uh, Vietnamese. That's your favorite meal? Vietnamese food. Yes. Vietnamese food. Mm-hmm. Oh man! What do you, what about you? How about specifically? Well, like what? What do you? What do you well, want? there used to be a restaurant, and it's no. I I don't think it's. That's right. Anymore. That's right. Yeah, it was yeah. called the East Wind. Yeah, and they had that's the right. best Asian food. And I used to get this thing that had the vermicelli, the grilled chicken. Mm -hmm. It had that's cilantro, right. all this good stuff. It was great. But I think for you, it's Italian. Yeah, it'd be yeah. I'd probably say Italian. Yeah. I love Italian food, and I like gnocchi. Yes, I like. All sorts of pasta. I love espresso. It's not espresso. Espresso. I just like that whole vibe. You and I like to eat out a lot, but I do enjoy mm -hmm. cooking. So yeah. it's kind of a. And picture. Lisa, you, you've even written a couple of cookbooks. I have, but mostly, you know, it's eating at home affords us the opportunity to eat a little bit healthier. It does. I think so. But we yeah. really watch. We we pretty much watch our diet closely. Now and then we'll kind of splurge. We're not you like, you watch it probably more closely than I do. Yeah, I do. I wasn't going to brag on myself, but I really do. I, do. I think I so because I do love some M and M's. Okay, how about your favorite trip? I think I know this that that we've ever been on or that. Um, oh, hands down, you, would... uh, you took me to Las Vegas to see Donny Osmond. 
That was hands down That's my your favorite. favorite? Trip. I I I what would you say? What were you gonna say is my favorite trip? Um I'll tell you why that was my favorite trip mm-hmm. is because I saw the Osmonds. A lot of people don't even know who Donnie you know, and Marie. I, Just Google Donnie and, and Marie, Marie Osmond. Yeah, it's a generational thing. But anyway, I saw the Osmond brothers in concert when I was um, probably 11 mm-hmm. years old, I think. And I've always liked Donny Osmond. I loved his music, everything. So, and I've always wanted to go to the Grand Canyon. And on that trip, you took me to the Grand Canyon and you surprised me with a Las Vegas show to see Donnie and Marie. The disappointing part was that Donnie, you know, where we were seated, they came out into the audience and they shook hands with everybody. Um, Donnie overlooked me. He shook hands with the lady on my left. On my right was you and he shook your hand, but he missed me. Marie, however, came through with her red lipstick on. That's Donnie's sister. Yeah. And she planted the biggest kiss on your forehead. So I was a little jealous. Yeah, it was, it was kind was of shocking. Jealous. It was but... it was quite interesting, actually. But anyway, mm-hmm. that was one of my favorite trips. One of my favorite. You've taken me on some great trips. My favorite trip with you. Oh, man. I can't wait to hear this. I, I'd have to say our honeymoon. Oh. The Mauna Kea Resort. On the big island of Hawaii. Yes, that yeah. it was beautiful. I just loved that resort. Just yeah, that was that was great. We were only twenty one years old, and yeah. someone had given us that trip. Who had a actually a condo or something yeah. on the on the in Hawaii, but we were there at the Mauna Kea Resort, mm-hmm. and we went. Uh, we were at the restaurant the first night, yes. and who was there? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger was sitting behind yes. us. Yes, I mean it was in his prime when he was ripped. And we kind of—I uh, mean, I remember one time we went to a restaurant at this resort, and Arnold was sitting there, and he had a cigar, like uh, like an after dinner cigar. He had a short sleeve shirt on. The vein across his bicep was the size of a garden hose. I was just like, "Oh my Good goodness!" Night. And then the next day, I saw him in an aerobics class. This is back when aerobics was popular on the beach with like fifteen people. That next morning, after that, I was in the aerobics class with Arnold. <laughs> Fifteen people on the beach. How many people have ever been to an aerobics class with Arnold? Yeah, you might have lifted weights. You might have, you know, seen him in some bodybuilding competition or a movie. But aerobics? Drop the mic. <laughs> That's okay. pretty cool. How, um, how did you know that you wanted to go into ministry? Uh, I'll answer that myself. I was at Florida State playing basketball and I began to see things I, that, that, I mean, obviously the Holy Spirit of God wanted me to see, but I remember taking some of my teammates to the church I attended. They were not believers and I began to see church through their eyes. I came from a great Christian home. Then from there, after I gave up my, my, my scholarship, I knew I was supposed to, to go into the ministry and I wanted to have that juxtaposition between, between serving the food where anyone could understand it, having a church that way, and also having a place where people would feel comfortable showing up no matter what they were involved in. So I believe any effective church should be comfortably uncomfortable. We're comforted for Christ, but uncomfortable for him. They make we're comforted by Christ, uncomfortable for Christ. So so that is, I guess, my call into the ministry. My father's a pastor. He never told me, hey, go into the ministry. Yeah. And sometimes people ask me, were you called into ministry? I was called to be Ed's wife. Amen. And when I was called to be your wife, I was called to participate in whatever that meant with your career, mm-hmm. your life. And so, yes, that's my call into ministry. Okay, here's one. Um, what's something you would tell that um, if you know if we got when we first got married, something that we wish we could tell people that we've learned when we first got married? Does that make sense? If you could go back in time, what would you tell somebody that we learned in the early years, or maybe I don't know? Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I don't understand I, the question. Huh? Oh, sorry. Oh, what would we tell our younger selves? <laughs> we would tell our younger selves what we've written in the creative marriage. That's what we would tell. <laughs> and we would tell them to subscribe to this podcast yes. on the XO 
podcast platform network. That's what we would do. Yeah, if we could go back and tell our younger selves something, it would mm. be everything we've written in the. Yeah, I would, I would say we just did not. Um, we should have had more information and application about marriage, about finances, sex, roles, household chores. You're on never on going to have. No, you won't have you it will all. Never have yeah. all the information you need when you first get married, but you need to have discussions about, you know, these key um, components mm. about sex, about conflict mm -hmm. resolution about communication about your goals for your family i think those if i could tell our younger self that i'd say man let's get that nailed down because it took you and i time and mm -hmm. and much prayer to figure some of this stuff out okay your favorite sports teams Ooh. i know lisa's <laughs> oh, i know her favorite sports well, teams but SEC football is it for me. So I will, I am a Gamecock through and through, which is the University of South Carolina. The real, that's their mascot. The right? real the USC is the Gamecocks, but the Gamecocks haven't been that great. So once they're out, any SEC team works for me. So do you have a time though where you were like into it? Like, like that was maybe your favorite year or time period that you followed a team? Well, of course, when you were at Florida State, I followed you. Yeah, and I loved watch. Yeah, you watched you play. me sit the bench for a long no, time. But thank I you didn't. for doing that. But I and I don't. I don't know that there's a favorite time. I just I love to watch football on mm -hmm. Saturday afternoons. I think it connects me. My dad and I. I was kind of the son for my dad because yes. there. I'm, I have one sister, and my dad and I would watch sports together. So, my favorite team, I guess football wise. I like the Cowboys, and it's especially engaging when you, for me, when you know players. So I would say back in their heyday, when they won uh, the Super Bowls, I would say the Cowboys. That was a long time ago. I know, but that, that's what I would say. I mean, yeah, it was a long time ago. I would have to say the Cowboys were my favorite team. We're hoping that they win again. As far as, um, as, far as basketball, I guess Florida State. As far as college, NBA. Oh, you're going through the gamut. Oh, what? The Mavericks being being here in Dallas. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. What's your favorite ministry moment? Yeah, that's like moment. saying, what's your favorite child? Who's your favorite child? Because uh -huh. there's so many great moments. And, and how do we, in our yeah. earthliness... You know our humanity. But how about just for you sermon. personally? Okay, so selfishly, I've, individually. Okay, this is going to sound. I hope it doesn't sound like super spiritual or self righteous no. or something. But truly, every day, every every weekend, when I drive up to Fellowship Church to go to church, and I see the buildings, I mm -hmm. see. Um, or I go to one of our other campuses, and I'm aware, made aware of what God has done. He has built this. And the crowds might be big. The crowds might be a little smaller due to COVID no or whatever. Um, but it's always been about one life at a time. And we'll hear these stories about someone who showed up, and they were saved, and their eternity was secured, or their marriage was you know, changed forever or their, their children got plugged in. And I just look at the buildings and they become, they're not just buildings. Yes. They're places that it's a place where God has done amazing things week after week after week. And so I can't really say a moment, but that's what I would. For me, it would be our Christmas Eve services because so many people show up during Christmas Eve and so many of those people don't know the Lord. And so many others who show up have been prayed for and engaged and invited. So I would say that. It's good. I All like, right. Well, I like this one. The best family vacation. Okay. It says family mm. vacation. That means Woo. family outing. Family outing. <laughs> A vacation is fun. when Ed and I go somewhere by ourselves. And an outing is when we take the whole family. I would say um, some of our recent trips to Florida. Yes, we enjoy no we enjoy the Florida Keys and fishing and 
the kids love the ocean and the grandchildren are now mm -hmm. going and they just love it. We, this past year, we did a, a treasure hunt where we spotted pirates off the coast and we told the grandchildren that they needed to be careful because the pirates bury their treasure and we actually had a treasure search and found a chest full of gold. It might have been plastic gold, but it was gold. That's good. <laughs> so that would be it. What are you excited about for this podcast? I'm excited just about sharing um, about what God has done in our lives, sharing victories and challenges, which every married couple deals with. I like that. I also like the engagement with with the audience. Yeah. I that, think that, I think that's I it say. for me. I would tell you that for for Ed and I, we always try to be vulnerable and share the highs and the lows, um, you know, with with integrity, sharing the right stuff, but um, being vulnerable and authentic, so that people can learn. Because we've been in this game, this marriage game, mm -hmm. probably shouldn't call it a game, but this marriage world for forty years. Um, We've learned a lot. Yeah, I, I feel more. I don't say this arrogantly or pridefully, but I feel, Lisa and I feel more equipped now to share about marriage than ever before. I mean, if you'd ask me to do this when I was forty, yeah, I could, and and that's great. It's great. Or, you know, twenty five. But now I feel I feel as though. We've, I'm, we've I'm not gone be through too a lot surprised. of we've gone through a lot of seasons in our marriage and the the thing that we've experienced in our marriage the beauty of it the um God working in it we want other people to experience mm -hmm. and so this podcast affords us the opportunity to share and I just challenge you and applaud you mm -hmm. for tuning in and if you know someone who's struggling in their relationship Invite them to watch and listen, because God can do great things in your marriage. And it has been the most amazing blessing to watch him work in our lives individually right. and as a couple. That's it. That's Ed and Lisa. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and the creative marriage it's kind of weird podcast. talking about yourself, but that's who we are. Hey, we do Woo. a pretty good job of talking about ourselves. Yeah. You know, when you talk to people, isn't it true? Their favorite subject to talk about is themselves. And if you ask the right people the right questions, you'll get the right answers and you can learn a lot. So that's why we're going to ask each other questions during this podcast, because I'm asking the right person the right question, get the right answer, and take the right answer and apply it to your context, and you'll go to a holy nother level. Thank you again for watching The Creative Marriage or listening to The Creative Marriage podcast. It's on the EXO platform, right? Right. And we'll see you next time.